Well, hi, welcome to the Kinexus Continuous Improvement Podcast. I'm Mark Graven, a senior advisor with Kinexus, and we're joined today with one of our customers. It is customer month, and so we're having these great conversations. We're joined today by Eric Mellert from Christian Care Ministry. Eric, how are you? Hey, hello, Mark. It's great to be with you today. Yeah, I'm glad you could be here. Eric is the manager of their process improvement team. And for a little bit uh, deeper introduction, Eric, I'm going to turn it to you. If you can, um, can you know, talk about Christian Care Ministry and uh, and what you do. It's an interesting organization. I'd love to. So just to give you a little bit of history of who we are, we've been in existence since 1993. And Christian Care Ministry is actually the parent organization for our most common product called MediShare. And MediShare is essentially an innovative healthcare sharing solution that helps Christians share in each other's medical needs. We have been doing this, as I said, since 1993, and we've been blessed to now have a membership of over 400,000 members nationwide. And as an organization, we come alongside them. We build a community of like-minded people who want to help one another with their medical needs, medical costs, and things along that that part of a uh, medical side of, of, of billing. And in so, we help them process their medical bills, and we've been able to now on an ongoing basis process more than $50 million in medical bills every month for our membership. And since we began, over $4 billion has been shared or discounted through the MediShare family. And it's incredible to be part of this organization to watch it grow. And I've been with the, the organization for a little over 10 years now and have seen it grown substantially over that time period. And our membership continues to grow and we continue to find new ways to serve our membership and the community as a whole. And it's been a blessing to be part of it. Yeah, well, and uh, we'll, we'll get to hear more of your experiences there. And we'll, I'll put a link to the show notes if people want to learn more about MediShare. And maybe just a quick follow-up question. It's, it's, it's not health insurance. It's not nope. insurance, and it's a different way of addressing yep. medical costs. Yeah, so it's actually considered a health-sharing ministry. And it's exactly what you just said. It's not health insurance, but it is another way for uh, the, the, the body of Christians to come together and help one another in their time of need when it comes to medical costs. And we do differentiate in that, in that it's not insurance, but it's a community that, that does this together. And uh, we have just, continued, as I said earlier, we've continued to grow and build this out. And really over the last six years, we've seen exponential growth with the Affordable Care Act and different things that have come into play and how we can help serve. And now we're the nation's largest sharing ministry and sharing network in the country. So I'm sure that that exponential growth creates need and opportunity for process improvement. Um, before we talk about, you know, what, what, what you're, well, maybe this will just all flow together. I was going to ask, you know, Eric, how did you personally get introduced to process improvement? Maybe that lines up with how Christian Care Ministry did as well. So it actually does. It's, it's pretty interesting. It, you know, I have been my entire life kind of a problem solver. I've always been a person that people come to and say, hey, how can we do this better? Or even better yet, I just tended to look at things and always think, man, there's got to be a better way to do this. And one of my favorite things is when someone would challenge me and say, yeah, we've been doing it this way for a long time. There's no better way. And mm -hmm. I, I would always be like, I bet you there is. I can figure something out. So my journey to process improvement actually was part of, for officially was part of being part of this ministry here at Christian Care Ministry. As we were growing, we had a need to, to build more processes and to make them go from serving a smaller membership and a whole lot less employees to you know doubling and tripling our employee size and membership every year uh, for over a few years. And it did make it quite difficult. But about six years ago, uh, I was working here at the ministry doing something completely different. And they approached me about a new team that was being started, specifically focusing on process improvement. Hmm. And as part of that, I'm like, you got my interest. I'd like to make things better. I, I came on and they hired myself and one other person to be in this role. And the other person was already a Lean Six Sigma black belt who trained and uh, was certifying other other belts through Lean Six Sigma. And he kind of brought me on under his wing. And as I started my path, 
of learning about what process improvement it is. And at the time, studying for my Lean Six Sigma Green Belt, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, what was wild is I'm sitting there in the class and as if we're learning the methodologies of, of Lean Six Sigma, but all kinds of different ways of looking at process improvement. <laughs> the whole time I'm sitting there going, well, that's what I was already doing, yeah. but there's a methodology to it. Hey, I never knew that this existed as a, a, a clear path in a career even. It, it just became even that much more exciting to find out something that was naturally part of who I am uh -huh. just started to, to come out and, and to see that there's a path that I could take or I could use this uh, in a business organization to be able to make things better and to take this as a career path. Never in my life would I have imagined that this is the path I would have taken um, no, or been able to be a quote unquote expert in, in where I'm at in process yeah. improvement, but yeah. it's been pretty wild. It's been a, it's been an exciting journey to take me through that process. And then also in the same methodology to take the business here through a process of learning what it is to be continuous process improvers. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're in that, um, that camp where, I mean, I, you know, I think you, you, we share the belief that everybody can participate in continuous improvement everybody yeah. should, but there, there's, there's a group of people who are just wired is what I call in, intuitive continuous improvement thinkers who really gravitate to it, who don't really need any prompting to do this type of thing. And your story is very similar to that of our Kinexus CEO, Dr. Greg Jacobson. <laughs> he, as, a, as a doctor, as a resident, he was wired that same way. And then mm -hmm. somebody, you know, uh, uh, I think his department chair gave him a copy of Masaki Amai's book, Kaizen. And like you said, Greg said, oh, there's terminology and methodology yeah. and frameworks to describe I think the way, the way you both think. And, and so that's well, what's great to hear. It, what's wild about that is, is you always think that you're kind of unique and find out that I'm not unique. There's a whole world uh, of people <laughs> well, out there that think like I do and, and, and kind of go down that path. So it's been, it's definitely been an exciting journey um, all the way through. Yeah. Um, so one follow-up question. Um, you said expert quote unquote. <laughs> "Quote unquote expert." What, what what's some of your hesitation to use the 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 word expert? Well, the biggest thing with process improvement, as I'm sure you're very aware, and uh, hopefully many of the people who are watching or listening to this also, is process improvement. Like so many industries or so many ways of doing things, is always evolving. Mm -hmm. So there's always something to learn. I am never. Uh, in my own mind, do I look at myself as an expert? Now, people here look up to me as being a leader in process improvement. And I, uh -huh. I, I enjoy teaching on process improvement. I enjoy mentoring. I, I actually manage a small team of process improvement analysts here at the business. So the word expert is the word that I don't like because I think we always constantly keep learning. And to be an expert at something in my mind kind of says, you've reached the pinnacle, you, you, you know all there is to know about it. And I'm always constantly learning and I want to continue to do that. That's actually a life part of who I am is to be always yeah. learning. Yeah. Well, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I, the, I, I, I thought that was going to be <laughs> the answer to the question, knowing a little bit about you and your background and your uh, experiences that, that humility to recognize. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can feel good that you're helping others and clearly you have something to um, contribute um, to helping others, but um I, I, it, uh, that I think representing that is really helpful when it comes to working with others and mm -hmm. bringing them along in improvement. You know, like to me, the expert implies that you're going to come in and have all the answers <laughs> instead of coming in and engaging others. So maybe that, right. that ties into, I was going to ask if you can share, um, you know, what is your approach to process improvement? How do you at a, at a high level go about this within yeah. um, your organization? So you, you kind of nailed it right there is, you know, if you're an expert, you come in with all the answers. And what we try to do here is to help people understand is we don't have all the answers. We have a methodology. We have tools in our toolbox. We have things that we can assist with. But we know that the people who are doing this process day in and day out, they're the experts. They're the yeah. ones who know what's going on. And they're extremely intimate. It's kind of like... Uh, some of those old TV shows that you, I'll, I'll avoid giving the name of it necessarily, but you know, when someone's working on a car and, and, they, and they are really intimate with that car and that car can make a, a little noise and they know exactly what's going on because they're, they're driving it and they're in it all the time. The same way when we work with people around the business, they're the experts. 
We're just the ones who come in and say, hey, we can lead you through this path to to figure out how to make your process better. And our approach here really has morphed over the years. So again, we, we started the official process improvement methodology and approach in the last six years. We've been building it and changing it. We've had some different changes in leadership. So we've had some different ways of looking at things, but it, the, the consistent has always been getting others to understand how they can make their systems better and how we can help walk them through it. We used to start off with uh, focusing a lot on a lot of people getting fully certificate, sort of full certifications mm -hmm. and things along those lines. And that's not bad. I think that's needed. You need to have those people who have that extra level of education and know-how. But what we've really started focusing on more and more here at the, the business is how do we make sure that more people can be involved in process improvement? And it becomes that culture of process improvement rather than, and I'm sure you're very aware of this. You, you've seen it happen in, in business places where, well, they do process improvement. And that's one of the things I, mm -hmm. that I have fought against for, you know, really the last four or five years as I've led this team is that concept of, well, they're the process improvement people. No, we're just, we're just facilitators. We're just mm -hmm. the ones who, who lead it and getting that knowledge out and trying to get people at all levels involved with everything from not just coming up with ideas, but being part of the solution as well. That culture is what will change a workplace and will mm -hmm. be, take you from the level of just doing process improvement to, to truly being continuous process improvement. And uh, that's what we're trying to build here. You know, Kind Nexus has been a huge addition to our, our toolbox mm. and it's taken us a long ways towards that, that aim of, uh, of what we can do in process improvement here. Yeah. And, and there's similar goal, I mean, you know, uh, going back to Greg Jacobson and Masaki Amai's book, Kaizen. Mm -hmm. Masaki Amai says Kaizen is everybody, everywhere, every day doing some improvement. And mm -hmm. we love when our customers share that vision and, and when they're working toward it. What you said about kind of shifting from being um, a doer to a helper is very similar to what we heard um, recent episode with uh, Mary Huck and Lynn Howell from Memorial Health System in Ohio. They talked about a very similar evolution in their role as process improvement people. Um, and and I, I think that's that's a, a healthy evolution of, of coming mm -hmm. in and being a facilitator instead of coming in and um, doing it for them. That's just, yeah. it, it doesn't work for so many reasons to come in and try to do it for someone. Well, anytime you do it for them, if something doesn't work or something falls back, they can always fall back and say, well, that was because of, but when you involve them and they become part of it and the whole way through, the ownership means they want to see it succeed even that much more. That's my opinion on that. And I yeah. believe that's absolutely true. I agree. It's the difference between I'm committed to it and we've hit a roadblock. So I'm going to help figure out how to get past it versus we hit a roadblock and we say, nope, mm -hmm. sorry, tried it, didn't work. Yeah, exactly. That makes all the difference. Um, so, can uh, I'd be curious to hear, you know, what were some of the challenges for Christian care ministry during um, COVID times? <laughs> How did you address that? Well, it was definitely something that we weren't uh, expecting, as, as so many of us were. Mm -hmm. We were kind of thrown off a little bit when COVID first started out. And taking this for a loop, you know, we have uh, a large employee base. We have a little around 700 employees scattered, uh, primary office in Florida, one in Colorado, and then some remote workers. And all of a sudden we had to go to our entire workforce being remote. Now I will say we living in Florida have to have a plan and preparation in place for hurricanes. Uh. So we're kind of familiar with, with how do we shut down and relocate and transfer some of our, our contact center and other services to other locations so that we can keep operational. But to do that with our entire landscape, including our backup site that we have, you know, in Colorado where our contact center is there, you know, to be able to take over. So doing all of that at one time, it was pretty impressive. Uh, believe it or not, our IT team worked amazingly in transitioning people to remote work. And we never had to shut down even for one day. 
Our customer base never saw a difference. We actually continued straight on through the whole thing and maintained the service levels that we wanted to, to keep. And a lot of that credit was due to the IT team and their hard work to make sure everyone had what they needed, get things set up, and then the teams here working together to support one another. So we made the transition to initially to remote work. Now that opened in and of itself a whole new world of challenges as we're all very familiar with, we become very familiar with how to do video conferencing, mm -hmm. how to do things in a remote setting over that period of time. It's a bit different, especially as someone like me who is, I'm a trainer, a teacher, an instructor, and how do we transition to some of that? And for a little while, we're all like, this will pass. We'll only be home for a month, two months, mm -hmm. maybe. And when it started to get into three months, six months, eight months down the road, we're like, okay. You know, what do we need to do to adapt and start bringing things to uh, some sort of uh, normality in regards to keeping things going forward? And, you know, so we adapted. I adapted my classes to be able to teach them online, um, how to do those virtually through webinars and, and things like that. We adapted to how to lead projects, how to bring people in and, and how we can set up things so that there's like homework where they can do it in between and bring that to to be a little more productive. But the entire business really stepped up and figured out how to continue going forward so that both our employees and our membership never saw a, a gap. And uh, just really proud of, of the work that has been done. It's been an adventure. Uh, we're just now starting to bring some employees back to office and try to see how we can continue to move forward. But we definitely learned a lot of lessons. Talk about process improvement there were a lot of lessons to be learned through this time. And in some ways we figured out there's certain things that maybe were a little bit more difficult, but we figured out new ways of doing things that actually are a whole lot more efficient in many areas. And uh, we'll benefit from those going forward and our membership will continue to benefit from, the, benefit from that as well. Yeah, well, that's great. So I'd love to hear more. And I'm, I'm sure this is part of the pandemic story. You know, when, when did Kinexus become part of the equation for you there? How, has the software and um, the approach and the people um, helped in the, the important work that you're doing, the important improvement work on top of it? Yeah. So Kinexus, we initially found out about Kinexus a little more than two years ago. And it was kind of, it wasn't, we weren't researching for it or, or necessarily looking for it. Honestly, I didn't even have an idea to go looking for something like Kinexus. Uh, we were trying to look at ways of how we might be able to do some new reporting to our executive level. And one of our executives found a blog article that someone at Kinexus had written and sent it on to myself and my director and said, hey, take a look at this. You might be able to glean some ideas. And I was reading through the article and it was well written and it really spoke my language. It was speaking to who we are and what we do. And I started thinking, if they're writing blogs like this, let me find out more about who they are. Mm -hmm. So I did exactly what I guess the blog was probably there to do. I clicked the link and I started looking into it and I started getting really excited about the possibility of what Kinexus could do. Over the years, we have tried to find other avenues of how do we document our process improvement? How do we keep things um, together, organized and everything else? And we've had product managers here for a long time. And they've had various software that we've tried to fit our process improvement process into a, a project management system. And it was okay, but it never really fit. And when I started looking into Kinexus and finding out that they basically saw the same problems that we did. So they started designing a system for process improvement. I started getting very excited. My team started getting very excited. We got to go, uh, well, man, it was uh, two years ago now to the Kinexus conference. Mm -hmm. and see what it's about, talk to some of the customers. I actually got a chance to, to sit down with multiple Kinexus uh, team members and talk to them about what is it really like and really connected with the culture, the, you know, the family, as it were, not only in the employees, but how they reached out to their customers mm -hmm. and, and took care of them. And, and it really just took off. Uh, and just to be honest, we were sold. We, we knew that this is someone we wanted to partner with and we wanted mm -hmm. to move forward with. So before COVID all started, we had had about a year in Kinexus that we were starting to set it up, learn about it, to build it, working with representatives, 
I'm sure by now that the people at Kai Nexus have gotten tired of all the questions I keep throwing their way. No, they, uh, they, they don't get tired of it. Trust <laughs> me. That's, that's fine. But it's been awesome being able to work with them and to, to ask those questions, to get answers, to see how they're developing and be part of the Kai Nexus story, not just a customer, but part of their story. Because as we had to adapt, as we had to then take and go, how do we better take in ideas? How do we better push these out to where they need to be looked at and, and then to work these projects. Um, and then on top of that, as every business knows, there's no cookie cutter methodology mm. to what your business wants to, to do with the data, how they want to see things. So we started throwing in customizations, working with the Kinexus team, you know, and, and gathering information from them and how, what we could potentially do as well as working with our executive level and saying, okay, here's what we want to see. And the relationship has just been amazing. Being able to work with them and, and adapt what we're doing and not only adapt it, what we're doing here internally, but now use the Kinexus system to take it so it's so much easier for the person doing it to absorb and to walk through the steps and to see it in one location. And that's something that we were missing greatly mm -hmm. before we found Kinexus was there was process improvement going on. But it was a project happening over here, a project happening over there. Everyone was in their own Excel spreadsheets. There was no centralized system that we were tracking everything. Uh, and if we were trying to, it was done by a few of us trying to push it into this project project management system. But Kinexus now has opened up the ability to, to many employees to be in the system, to be adding things and to be tracking them. And we can see it in one big picture. Uh, it's been just outstanding and, and the growth that we've had over the last year, especially the last six months uh, with how we've developed and what we're using and the ability to get more people involved has been just exponential. And a lot of that is in part to the, the aid that we've gotten from Kinexus, the system and the people. Mm. And yeah, uh, we, we like to say, you know, the, the, Signing up to be a customer and partnering with Kinexus, uh, it's not just software, it's a team of people who help you get up and running and support you through that, that entire journey. So no, they, 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 they don't get tired of the questions. We, we <laughs> love it when customers uh, reach out for help. That's, that's why we're here. So I know. Some of what we've even early on, you know, we said, hey, what about this? Can we do this? We know some of it has gone into tickets and we've been with Kinexus long enough now that we get excited when we get the email that says, hey, that idea that you are part of because we're it's part of the Kinexus family, it's us, other customers and the Kinexus people is now going live next month. Just want to let you know. And that it sounds so small, but that really gets us excited yeah. because it shows that Kinexus really is listening to its customers. Well, and we love it when our customers connect with each other, whether it's um, the user conference that, that we host. We, you know, we've been calling it Kenexicon the last couple of years. People don't dress up like it's Comic-Con or something. Yeah. You know, it's just we use that day. <laughs> that would be fun. But It'd be a whole new twist, that's for sure. <laughs> it would be. Um, but anyway, sorry to get sidetracked on that. But you know, I think um, connecting with other customers, you'll find people who um, have – you know, similar drive and passion for this work, um, people who are, are taking a similar approach to trying to spread this approach through the organization. And, you know, another thing I wanted to ask you, you've touched on this, but I love um, when, we, when we talked before um, the recording, you used a phrase that really stood out to me, um, taking process improvement from the few to the many. And we yeah. love supporting that. I was wondering, like, what else you would share about that phrase and that goal and, and, and what that means to you in Christian care ministry. So as I, I mentioned earlier in talking about changing the culture and getting more people involved, I've challenged the team this year as, as kind of our slogan that we're really focusing everything around that we're doing is taking continuous process improvement from the few, meaning those few people who are certified, those few, few people who have that extra level of, of education and training and focusing them to do the work, taking it to the many, meaning as many employees as we possibly can being involved in the process. And to do that, we've had to take a look at how we do process improvement and, and really 
step out of the box a little bit as far as the the strict methodology and knowing that you have to have this set of knowledge and these set of tools you have to follow them exactly this way every time there's a place and a purpose for that and there's times when we still have projects that require the level of attention that needs someone who has that extra level of training and education but there's so much <clears throat> that can be done when you get more people involved mm-hmm. and we, yeah. We've talked about this. I actually uh, remember from a, a previous webinar that Kinex has hosted where we, they talked about, you know, kind of the improvement pyramid. And when you have your black belts and your green belts, there's only so much you can do with them. Mm-hmm. But when you take that and you start breaking it down to a wider population and getting more people involved, the exponential effect that occurs yeah. is outstanding. And so you may have someone in the larger group who has that next $10 million idea. And, but you may have, would you rather have one $10 million idea <laughs> or a hundred $1 million ideas, mm-hmm. you know, and that's what we're looking at when we do, when we talking about doing it to the many, their improvements could be the next big thing, mm-hmm. or they could be the next thing that just makes life a little bit better for their fellow employees or for our membership. But, you start adding that up. And like I said, it's not just adding one to another. It becomes exponential mm-hmm. because not only are your improvements getting that much better and you're, you're doing more, but the excitement starts to get there and people start looking at it and saying, Hey, you know, challenging one another, which ones did you work on or what did you submit? And so we're, we're turning that corner from the few, the, the certified ones and the, the people who we say those are our process improvement um, specialists in those teams and whatnot to really trying to get as many people involved every day. And then even if it's a small improvement on a, on a daily or weekly basis, those start to add up and they add up for, for uh, not only the value financially, but they add up for the value of what it brings to the business and the organization that gets you to that, that um, process improvement culture that we don't want to see and happen so that we're all thinking about it and it just becomes part of nature of who we are and what we're doing so that's where that really came from the the few to the many was all about taking it out of the specialized and getting away from what we talked about earlier where well they're the ones who do process improvement and getting it to we do process improvement and, and we're all working to make things better that's beautifully said, and um, I think that's a great thought. I don't know how we topped that like that. That was just brilliant. <laughs> the way you said that, so maybe we'll just go ahead and uh, and close the podcast on on that high note. Um, our guest again uh, today has been Eric Mellert. He's the manager of the process improvement team at Christian Care Ministry. But as we've learned, the process improvement team that in a way is the many. Yes, everybody absolutely. in the organization. But that, that takes leadership, that takes training and coaching and support and helping and facilitating whatever words you would use. So, Eric, thank you for doing all of that. And thank you for being a Kinexus customer. We really appreciate you sharing some of your story and what you're doing here with us today. It's been great. We look forward to what uh, the relationship with Kinexus continues to grow into and the great things that we both get to achieve at, at both Kinexus and at Christian Care Ministry. Yeah, and we'll look forward to seeing you next year in person at uh, Connexicon 2022. Yes, can't wait. (laughs) Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. Thank you.